begin with breaking news at the top of the hour. Aiken County deputies on the scene of a shooting right now on Old Aiken Road. This is just outside of North Augusta. Take a look at this map. The sheriff's office telling us just minutes ago one person was hit. Aiken deputies were first called to the scene around 5.30 for reports of a car crash. Shortly after, they found that person who was shot, and then EMS was called in. Deputies say the scene is still active out there, and we have a crew on the way. We will update you just as soon as we get more information. Another top story tonight, a Richmond County deputy shot in the line of duty sharing his story for the first time eight months after that life-changing day. And I didn't know if I was going to make it through or not. It was July of last year. Deputy Kenneth Mercer shot by a homeless man in downtown Augusta. He was on a call about a man armed with a gun. Since then, Mercer has undergone a journey of recovery with family, friends, and law enforcement by his side. Today at a Shepherd Blood Center luncheon, he shared his story to encourage others to give back. Our city hood sat down with him. There aren't many who live to tell their story of survival. By the grace of God, I'm still here. I never could imagine almost doing uh, 30 years and on the tail end of my career, kind of turning my life upside down. What took only a matter of seconds. I was shot once in the left side of my neck, which struck my carotid artery. That one summer morning. Struck vertebrates in my back, fractured my rear shoulder blade. Leave them with injuries for life. Collapse my lung. Lucky doesn't even begin to describe Deputy Mercer. And I think this is the best way for me to give back to what they've done for me. Some of the people in this room provided the blood that potentially saved Deputy Mercer's life. It gave me a purpose. What I did over all these years wasn't for nothing. From blood drives to motorcycle rides to this very room, Deputy Mercer's impact is widespread. It's been an eye-opening experience to have the support from the community and the residents of Richmond County and other law enforcement friends I have throughout other agencies come to support me. Really been heartfelt. And even after having all the odds against him at one time, it's safe to say Deputy Mercer won this battle. In Augusta, Sydney Hood, on your side. He has found a new calling. Deputy Mercer says he had plans to return to work, but because of his injuries, he's not able to. So he says he's going through the process of retiring now, but what a story he has to tell. To weather now, with the first alert, radar network lit up today. Cast for you coming up in just about 10 minutes. In 12 days, traffic in Augusta, specifically Washington Road, will get busy. Thousands will be flocking into the city for the Masters Tournament. One main area that we'll see a lot of traffic is our backyard, right outside the station. Going to give you a live look there at Riverwatch Parkway and Alexander Drive. This is right off ex uh, I-20, exit 200. And it is the main path to get from I-20 to Augusta National. Craig Ellison has a look at some of the traffic changes this year. Berkman's. Washington and exit 199 on I-20. West Augusta season starts next week on April 1st with some big changes coming to the area that are brand new this year. New traffic patterns coming up and down Berkman's are sure to be a new test. But the city, combined with Augusta National, aim to push down uncertainty on where to go with a new app. Access through this QR code, it will provide live updates on which parking areas are full and where patrons need to go. Hopefully it, it helps with some of the confusion we've had in the past, especially when we close Alexander in the morning or Berkman's in the afternoon. People get a little confused about, you know, where do I go, how do I get around it? So this should really help with that. As well as a new traffic signal coming here on Washington Road and River Ridge that starts next week on April 1st left turns will practically become non-existent at this intersection and new routes on Berkman's will start April 6th. A soft reroute will snake through the Surrey Center in the evening, but down the road will be a hard stop. For anyone moving towards Augusta National when play is over, people will be rerouted through Wellington Drive and out Downing Street across from the Westover Cemetery. There'll be letters sent to those individuals that live between Wellington Drive and the traffic circle. I mean, it's not a many, uh, but we all obviously want to educate them on what's going on because it will be a hindrance to them. It seems like we're all on the same sheet of music. It seems like um, it should go well. Now, this is a lot to follow for West Augusta specifically, and we'll have that full breakdown of details on our website at WRDW.com. In Augusta, Craig Allison on your side. And for those who venture downtown, traffic engineers say the construction we've been seeing is going to be on pause through the Masters Tournament, and then roads like 13th Street will be opening back up. 
Did you know in the 2022-23 school year, 54% of third through eighth grade students in South Carolina met or exceeded expectations in English and language arts on state testing? Now to bridge the gap, kindergarten through third grade teachers throughout the state will get training to better teach kids how to read. Nick Beelan joins us live from the newsroom. And Nick, the governor visited a local school today. They're already doing this training. Yeah, J.D. Lever Elementary has been a pilot school already doing this training the last two years. Now seeing it's signed to go statewide, administration says today that this is monumental for the future of education. Yeah, I think it's going to turn the entire state around. Kippy Kelly, principal at J.D. Lever, in 2020 saw teachers getting frustrated not being able to get their students to a higher reading level. Their students still were not reading and they were still working just as hard as they were and not getting the success that they needed. Through researching, she found Mississippi and saw how they have a program called Letters. Their numbers changed in the right direction, leading J.D. Lever and now the entire state of South Carolina's K-3 through grade teachers trained in new methods and best practices when teaching children how to read. If we don't support our teachers in the implementation of those plans, it doesn't matter. The thing that matters most is what our teachers have, the tools that they have in their toolbox in the classroom. 45% of South Carolina third graders aren't reading on par. This program retains third grade students who are below the level, but looks towards more programs to get their reading standard up before it's too late. What we had happening is, you know, a child was already well behind by the time they got to third grade, and then it's, you know, kind of ringing the alarm, uh, and it's just too late. Governor Henry McMaster knows how crucial prioritizing reading at an early age is. This is going to be your world, and in order for you to fully appreciate it and make it a better place, you must read. And the state will roll out this plan with the expectation in two years all K through third grade teachers complete the program. Georgia also passed an early literacy act with a similar setup of prioritizing K through third grade teachers. This was signed on April 13th last year. Okay, big changes and hopefully changes for the best for the future. That's what our kids are, Nick. Thanks. Two people are facing charges after reports say a nine-month-old was exposed to fentanyl. Saturday, Richmond County deputies were called to a home in Augusta for a possible overdose. Reports show the child might have been exposed to the drug through a contaminated $20 bill. The child was taken to the hospital. Two people are facing charges after reports say a nine-month-old was exposed to fentanyl. Saturday, Richmond County deputies were called to a home in Augusta for a possible overdose. Reports show the child might have been exposed to the drug through a contaminated $20 bill. The child was taken to the hospital and later screening showed a positive test for fentanyl. The child is under observation and both 37-year-old Rosa Garcia and 41-year-old Thomas Wright are each charged with cruelty to children. The Department of Defense helping get more service members' families into the workforce. Military families, you know, they're always on the move, and that can make it really hard for the significant others out of soldiers to put down those roots and hold down a job. Unemployment numbers for military spouses is at 21%, and now Fort Eisenhower is doing more to help. Even if you're not in the market now for a job um, and you have littles at home, which I had that as well. I had three under four, so I know what that's like to be out of the workforce for a period of time. Um, this will help get the wheels turning. The Hiring Our Heroes Military Spouse Hiring Event comes up tomorrow at Fort Eisenhower's conference and catering one building from 10 until 1 in the afternoon. If you do go, you're going to get a complimentary headshot, and trainers will help you identify potential career pathways for you. Over 24 employers will be there to offer up jobs. Well, Georgia Southern grads know it well, but it's an experience everybody should get to have. Will Volk takes us to the borough in his one tank trip. And we have seen a very wet Wednesday across many portions of the CS3, but luckily nicer weather as we close out the week. We'll have that full forecast next. We'll be back above average, low 80s if you have any Sunday plans. We are overdue for that nice change. Riley, thank you. Head south to Statesboro, and you can find nature's wonders in the heart of my old college campus. That's right. One of our state universities will both stop by Georgia Southern for this week's One Take Trips. <laughs> You can see Georgia Southern University Center for Wildlife Education is doing that for these students. Founder and Executive Director Steve Hines says...
There's a lot to see here. We have several eagles. We, we have the waterfowl pond that has over 20, 120 uh, native, if you will, waterfowl that routinely come through here. We have an extensive collection of, uh, uh, of snakes to include a 15-foot python. He's holding freedom, Georgia Southern's live mascot who flies before every home football game. After the university got the idea to keep a live bald eagle on campus, they built this. Over the years, it's expanded into an 18-acre center in the middle of campus. Hine says education is a big part of what they do. This is really uh, right in the middle of campus, and it is its really sole purpose, I would suggest, is to bring man and nature together. Students on this field trip got to meet different reptiles and see birds take flight, including owls. Hi, let me try to get close to Freedom, who doesn't like the way I'm approaching him. But I still got my picture. In Statesboro, Will Bolt, on your side. Thank you for that, Will. We continue with some breaking news out of Aiken County. We're live at the scene of this shooting. This is Old Aiken Road, just outside North Augusta. The sheriff's office says one person over there was hit. They were first called to the scene around 5.30 for reports of a car accident, and shortly after they found a person who was shot there. EMS was called, but a reporter on the scene says that every deputy on scene just left with lights on, so we're staying tuned to find out what exactly is going on. If there's something new to report, we'll let you know just as soon as we can here or over on 26 News at 7 o'clock. But that's the latest there from that scene in Aiken County. Still to come, a local program launching the next generation of teachers straight into the classroom. It's offering more than just education. We explain after the break. A survey released in 2022 by the National Education Association found 55% of public school teachers were ready to ditch the classroom way earlier than planned, most signing burnout from the staffing shortages. As a way to prevent a mass exodus from the classroom, Columbia County is teaming up with Augusta University again this year to get students interested in teaching and keeping them in the field. Our Hallie Turner explains. When it comes to educating the next generation, students say a national teacher shortage isn't the only thing getting in the way. Oh, what are you going to do after high school? Oh, yeah, I want to be a teacher. Oh, well, they don't make a lot of money. It's typically the reaction. Treasure Bush says her path changed after joining hundreds of other students in the TAP program, short for teaching as a profession. It really became, like, not so much of a job to me, but it was just something I love. Like, I love going to lab or work with the special needs students. I love going to other um, elementary schools to help with them and their dances and everything. The program gives students hands-on learning experience before pursuing the degree in college. It's so cool because you get to go to an elementary school three days out of the week and you get to be a student teacher. But she says not all students are sold on the idea. No, no I wanted to be a teacher since like middle school, but um, my friend Nye who's here with me today, he's still kind of on the fence about it. And that's where the Columbia County's TAP Talks come in. This is a wonderful opportunity to come and be like, well, do I want this? And hear from people who have been teachers for a really long time and decide if that's right for you. Yes, I want to be able to pour love into my students. Reminding students how they they can influence and be influenced by the next generation. You don't become a teacher because you're like, oh, I really need a paycheck. You become a teacher because you love students and you love learning. In Evans, Hallie Turner on your side. By the way, those students also learned about dual enrollment and how they can take certain classes for free through AU and scholarship opportunities. In just five years, the program has grown from zero students to more than 400 students. They hope will teach here at home in the future. <laughs> On your sideline, eight, RCS Roofing, zero down financing available. We know you get up early. That's why we get up even earlier. Finding out the things you want to know. Rain? Well, that can mess up your whole day. I'll tell you what to expect outside, on the way home, and at night if the kids have a game. In the morning, we've got one job, making sure you've got no surprises on your way to work. If it happens overnight or breaks early in the morning, we're going to tell you about it. When that alarm goes off, get up and get out with News 1226 this morning on your side. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, our exclusive interview with the family of a Boeing whistleblower who was found dead in an apparent suicide earlier this month. Our CBS News investigation tonight here on the CBS Evening News. 
Well, if you are heading out this evening into tonight, we are still tracking a good bit of rain south of I-20. So this is mainly going to impact areas in the southern and eastern CSRA. So counties like Emanuel, uh, Burke, Jenkins, Brevin, Bamberg, Allendale, Barnwell, even Aiken and portions of Richmond County will be included in that. But if I didn't just mention your county, you should stay mostly dry the rest of tonight. Here's a current view from our lake cam where you can actually see some of those clouds breaking up if you look towards the west. So we are expecting better weather as we wake up early tomorrow morning. But until that happens, we are likely going to see that rain stick around for tonight. For the next couple of days, though, we are going to see some breezy conditions Thursday, and then sunshine finally returns Friday through our Easter weekend. Easter weekend's finally going to feel warmer for us as well. We should see highs upper 70s Saturday, low 80s Sunday, and then staying above average into early next week. We'll get an update on that old Aiken Road shooting coming up at the top of the hour on 26 News. Then we're back with more News 12 tonight at 11. We'll see you there. At the CBS Evening News, we focus on solutions, finding solutions to help people understand what are the right choices to make for you and your family. I'm attorney Ken.